In this video, I'm going to show you three different ways that you can share your pages in Notion. And we're starting right now. Welcome to another video here at the Productivity Corner YouTube channel. If this is your first time here and you want to learn how to get more organized, save time and be more productive, then start now by subscribing and clicking the bell icon so you don't miss anything. We're going to start off by answering this question by Kat Smith. So she's got two free personal accounts, but she wants to know how she can copy all of her data from one account to another or how she can share it between those two accounts. That's a really good question. So thanks for sending that through Kat. So the first thing I like to do is if I've got two accounts within Notion and that could be a work account and a personal account or it could be two free personal accounts is that I go to my menu option on the left hand side and I click on my Notion account and I go down and click on add another account from email. So let's go ahead and add my test account for Notion. So once I've added that account, you can see that the Notion app has opened up into my test account. And if I go and click on the test account now, you'll see that there are two email accounts associated to this same Notion app and within each account you can see all the workspaces that are associated to that account. So in the test account I've only got the one workspace whereas in my in my productivity corner account I've got a number of different workspaces as an example. And what this allows me to do is easily switch between the two accounts. So if I wanted to go back into my productivity corner Notion account I'll just simply click on this workspace and we're back and then I'll go back into this page page and this is where we started off from. Now I can't access this particular page from my test account because these two accounts are completely separate and if I go back into my test account you'll see that there is no association between those two accounts. I can't go into the find and look up that page. So now if I wanted to be able to transfer pages from my productivity corner account into the test account best way to do that is to go back into your productivity corner account navigate to the page that you want to be able to duplicate. So let's see in this case I want to be able to go into my formulas in Notion and I want to be able to duplicate or transfer this page and all the underlining pages along with the formatting and bearing in mind there's a lot of pages in here and the pages also have pages within them as an example. So I want all of this set up to be transferred to my test account because if I start doing this from scratch in my test account it will take me ages which is going to waste time. So let's go back to our top level page and we're going to go ahead to the top right hand corner we're going to click on share. What we're going to do is we're going to click on this and then we're going to add the test account. There's a couple of ways you can do this, but I like to just put in the email of the account that we want to be able to share this page with. So let's go ahead and do that. And as soon as you put in the email, you can see that Notion will recognize any account that's associated to that email. So in this case, it's picked up my test account, which is great. That's exactly what I was after. The other thing you can note here is that when you're giving access to another account in Notion to one of your pages, you can select whether you you want them to have edit, full access, comment, or simply read only view. So it entirely depends on the type of access you want to give. Full access is when you completely trust the person and then they're able to give other people access to that particular page as well. But if you just want them to be able to collaborate with you, then I'd recommend using the edit functionality. So in this case, we're going to do that. So let's select that and then we'll go ahead and invite that account. So there's a couple of things that have happened straight away. The first thing that I want to bring your attention to is in the top right hand corner, you can see that along with the productivity corner account which has full access we can now see that the test account has appeared there as well and it's got the can edit access right which is great because that's exactly what we want to do so this is really handy when you want to know who's got access to a particular page you can simply come up here click on the share and you'll see who's got access and what type of access they've got the other thing I want to show you is that on the top right hand corner you've got these two circles that have here with initials P and T P stands for the productivity corner and T is my test account. This is visually quite nice to see. It tells you straight away that there's two accounts in Notion that have access to this page and all the underlining pages within it. And the other cool thing about this is if you're actually editing a page within Notion and the other account is accessing the same page at the same time, you can see a reference to this circle with the P or the T right next to the text block. So you can see which part of the page the other account is at. And the final thing I want to bring your attention to is the menu on the left hand side. So you'll notice that the formulas in Notion has moved from the private section of the menu bar into this shared section. So that's again prompting the productivity corner account that this particular page is now shared. So let's go over to the test account to see how we
we can access this page from there. So we'll click on the account name and you'll scroll down. And what you'll see here is that within our test account, we've got two different workspace options now. So the test account is our original account with all of our pages that are not shared. And if we click into it again, the second workplace is the productivity corner workspace with the page that's been shared with us. Now this might be different for you depending on the name of the originating workspace. So if this was called thinking space, for instance, and we shared a page from thinking space, then instead of this showing up as productivity corner, it would say thinking space and then it would tell you that page has been shared with you. So let's go ahead and click into that. So as you can see, we can now access exactly the same page with all the underlining sub pages from within our test account because our test account now has access to two workspaces. One is our own one and the other one is the one that's been shared with us. And again, you can see by the top two circles that this page is shared between Productivity Corner and the test account. And also if we click on share and you scroll down, you, you can see every account that's or access to this page. Now in this instance, because we don't have full access, we don't get the option to be able to change the access. You can see I'm not able to click into this and change any of the settings, which is exactly what you'd expect because we can only make changes to this page. But if we had full access, we would be able to add other people as well. So we'll just go ahead and change the color of this just to demonstrate that we do have ability to change the page. The other thing you'll notice is the P that showed up. And that's because, as I mentioned earlier, this is Notion way of telling us that within a shared page this is the area of the page the other users are currently accessing so the productivity corner account is currently also looking to edit this particular block so this is really helpful if you're collaborating on the same piece of content because you don't want to be making changes to the same text block at the same time because that can get very confusing and I'll just go ahead and click on some of these sub pages so you can see that we do have access to all of the pages that sit underneath that parent page which is great so this is really great if you want to just be able to collaborate with someone but you don't want to be able to own any of this content but like cat if you want to be able to transfer or be able to move all of this data between the productivity corner account and the test account then the easiest way you can do that is by hovering over the page name in the menu on the left hand side clicking on the three dots and then you can see the notion gives you a couple of different options one is for the test account to be able to leave and no longer share the page but we don't want to do that in this case what we want to be able to do is click on duplicate to and then it gives us the option to do it to our test account so let's go ahead and click that notion will prompt you that is duplicating the pages into the test account and now it's automatically taken us back to our test account workspace so let me just show you that so instead of us being in the productivity corner shared page it's taken us back into the test account and then within the test account you can see that we've now got this new page which was the formulas in notion page the page that we're sharing we've now duplicated this page into the test account and it's got all of the underlying pages and the formatting we don't have to redo any of that work because notion allows us to be able to duplicate that piece of work and all of the underlying sub pages so this is really useful if you're looking to transfer a lot of pages from one Notion account into another. Obviously, it's good practice to be able to ask the account that you're taking this page from whether it's okay for you to be able to duplicate that page. Couple of things to note, you can see on the top right-hand corner when you click on the share, this page is no longer shared. So all the association between the productivity corner and the test account have gone. So this is a completely standalone version of the pages and the test account user can do anything they want with this page. So that was a very quick way of sharing a page in Notion. Now, one of the things you want to bear in mind is when you are sharing a page, let me just go back to our original account. When you do share a page, all the underlining pages that sit within it get shared as well. If you don't want that to happen and you only want a specific page to be shared, then you want to make sure that you go to the page that doesn't have another page linked to it. So for instance, if we go down further into the subscribe page and then we go further into the progress bar options example, this page is the the last page or the child page within this hierarchy. So if you look at the breadcrumbs at the top, we are three levels down into the pages. So if I just wanted to be able to give access to this page, I would have to follow the same process, but just make sure that there's no other pages linked underneath this page. So at the moment, you can see that this page is also shared between the two accounts. So if I go ahead and remove the access, 
for the other account and then we'll give it access again just to demonstrate what we mean. So Notion will give you a prompt that I'm about to restrict the access and we want to go ahead and say yes. And then Notion will give us a prompt to say that this access is restricted to this page and not everybody will be able to see this when they're in the subscribe page. So let's go ahead and go back into our test account to see what impact that's had. So we're going to go back into the shared page and then we'll go back into the subscribe page and then we'll go back. So what you can see here is that page that we've just removed access for, that page is no longer appearing as an option for us to click into. So if you got a complicated page structure where you've got parents and level one, level two, level three sort of child pages, then you can go into those child pages individually and be able to restrict the access like that. And then if you duplicate the page, you'll only get the pages that you have access to. Now you could run into the scenario where you have a lot of pages that you don't want people to have access to. So rather than going into each of them individually and removing the access, what you could do is navigate straight to that page and then only give access to that page. So let's just quickly see what that looks like. So I'm going to remove the access altogether for this page because this is the parent page where all of the permissions are being driven. That's my test account. So I need to go into my productivity corner account and change the access rights from there. So let's go ahead and remove the test account. So we remove the test account now from the parent page. And now we're going to navigate to the page that we want to just give access to. So we'll go in there. We'll go straight into the progress bar options page. And this is the lowest level child page that we want to be able to give access to. So let's go ahead and do that. So in the share, we'll add the test account again. Now we can see the test account has got access to this page. So let's head over to the test account to see what we can see. So one thing you might need to do is be able to log out of your second account or your test account and then log back in for any new shared pages to appear there. So let's go ahead and do that quickly. And the way you log out is by clicking the three dots, logging out there. Let's go ahead and add another account from the email. Let's add our test account. So there you go. As soon as we've added in, it's taken us straight to the new page that's been shared to us. So we can now see that, click into there and we can see the page that's been shared with us and we can't go to the parent page. This is the only page that we have access to. And if we wanted to be able to duplicate this page into our Notion, again, we just click on the three dots, duplicate the page into our test account and then you can see it will appear in your left hand menu as a page that you can change and update and then share as you please and it's got all the data. So that's one way of sharing pages in Notion and then being able to duplicate those which is very very helpful if you want to be able to transfer a huge amount of data and pages like for like from one Notion account into another. So the second option you can choose is to be able to share a page on the web as a public page and then for people to be able to duplicate that and use it as a template themselves. Now a great example of that is the templates library within Notion. So if you click on that you can see all of these pages that have been produced by Notion are actually templates that have been made public on the web and we're able to simply open them up and then duplicate those within our own space. So I'm going to show you exactly how to do that now because that's another way of sharing your work in Notion. So let's say I wanted to be able to share this particular page with anyone in the world. So we'll go ahead on the top right hand corner and we'll click on share and now instead of adding individual accounts using emails and bearing in mind if you've got a free account you can only add five people or you can only share one page with five people which is a bit limiting so if you wanted to be able to do it with more than five people or you just wanted the general public to be able to see your page you would click on share with the web and you toggle this box and what you'll see is that notion will generate a unique link for this page and it'll give you a couple of different options so you can send this link to anyone and then you you can decide whether you want them to be able to edit, comment, duplicate the page as a template within their own account and also be able to index it on the search engines just like Google. Now in this case I'm going to just choose the duplicate as a template option just to be able to demonstrate but if you're interested in learning more about the search engine indexing that's really useful if you want to be able to use Notion to produce a web page or a website and if you're interested in learning about that then I'll link to a video where I talk through that in more detail detail. So let's go ahead and copy this link and open up a web browser and we'll go ahead and paste this link in. And as you can see, it's it's a pretty unique link. So it's going to be very, very hard for the general public to just be able to stumble upon this link. But having said that, there is a word of caution because anyone who has access to this link can share this link, forward it on, and then other people can simply just click on the link and be able to access your page. So just bear that in mind. So don't use this method if you've got personal or sensitive information 
information within the page that you are sharing. So as you can see, this Notion page is opened up in the web browser and it gives us a couple of options on the top right hand corner and we're going to select the one that's called duplicate. So I'll click on that and you'll see that you'll get a prompt saying it's duplicating that page in the test account and voila. So as you can see, this page has now appeared in our menu on the left hand side as a page that's within our test account. It is no longer shared. It's within our test account and we're able to do anything with this page and it's retained all of the formatting. So again, this is another very good way of transferring a Notion page from one account into another or sharing a Notion page from one account into another. And obviously if we had given the edit rights, you can use this method to be able to collaborate with others as well. So the third and final way I'm going to show you today is to be able to share an entire workspace with your team. Now the use cases for this are limited. So I would say that this is when you're collaborating more as a team rather than with one or two other people. So if you've got a team of more than five people and you want to be able to give them access to more than one page, then I would say you would use this particular method. A point to note that this option is only available if you have the team plan, which is not the free personal plan. So let's just go ahead and quickly see how, how you would go about doing that. So we'll go to the left hand menu bar and then we'll navigate to the workspace that we want to be able to give access to. So just make sure that you click on the workspace that you want to share with your team. So in this case, I want to be able to share my productivity corner workspace. So I'll click on that and I'll go into the settings and members. And then you'll see in the member section, there is a upgrade to team plan option. And plus you can add more members to that workspace. Now, if I try and do that, Notion will prompt me to say that I don't have that plan. Therefore, I'm not able to do that. But if you did, you would be able to add all the team members over here and then they would have access to all of the pages within that workspace. So it wouldn't just be the one page, it would be all of the pages that are in there. Obviously, from a timing perspective, it's that's the quickest and easiest way of giving large amount of access to sort of more than five people at the same time. But again, for most of us, you wouldn't necessarily need that particular option. In terms of collaborating with sort of less than five people, I would say you use option number one. If you did want to be able to share your template or your Notion setup with the general public or a lot more than five people, use a share with the web option because that works really well. And Notion being a community is very good at sharing templates. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, put it in the comments below. And if you're interested in learning more about Notion, then I recommend that you check out this video next.